All right, good morning. It's a brand new week, Monday. I'm in the shop here, warehouse, and I just got the uh, install crew, Jonathan and Scott. Just met with them a few minutes ago. They're headed out to their projects that they're working on today. Um, I was gonna see if I had some pictures of that. I don't know if I do right now, but anyways, they're in route. So I can look right here on the dispatch board and see that they're on the way to their project right here. It shows that they're in route at the moment. And uh, they're working on replacing a split heat pump system in a mobile home or modular home trailer today. So looking forward to seeing how that project comes together. I'm going to uh, check it out for them later on this morning just to make sure they have everything they need. But Cliff did the spec out. He did an excellent job of doing the spec out when he did it. He got all the videos, all the photos. So when they get on site this morning, they know pretty much exactly what they have to do. Obviously, there will be a few things that they'll have some questions about and some things that they will need to work through. Uh, I'm working this morning on testing a fan motor that came out of an air handler that was reportedly not working properly. So I've rigged up a little something here. This isn't just super professional but it works and I've got high voltage coming into it I've got high voltage coming out of this coming into this relay that's coming to the fan portion here so I've got high voltage being dumped in right there I've got low voltage coming off of right here and going to my common side right there and then I've got it on the speed tap number two and all I have to do to test it is just take this is not safe to do really with your finger but I'm doing it and my fan comes on over there so this is a way just to test a motor and make sure that it's working properly so uh, it was a piece of equipment that was purchased and when they got it out they said hey the fan doesn't seem to work for some reason so or reportedly not work but I've tested it seems to be working fine I don't know where they got their info from but anyways so uh, things I have to work on today. I've got several sales projects to follow up on today. I've met with Zach this morning, went over his sales projects with him, made sure he was following up with any of his customers at maintenance, you know, new system leads, um, major repair leads, any kind of accessories he has out there that he's quoted. So I spoke with him this morning. Uh, he's got several different ones. He's working on some surge protectors, see pictured. He's worked on uh, surge protectors, that, quoting them. Uh, see that pictured? He had a new system lead that he was telling me about. See that pictured as well. That was for a church project. And it seems like there was one other item. He's working on some maintenance quotes that he had submitted, but he needs to follow up on them in the future. Um, and I have a phone call with... Uh, uh, Brian later today just to go over some of those same things with him. So we try to stay up on all of our sales leads and keep continuous flow of work. We're not pushy, we're just, we're available and we try to make ourselves as available as possible. I have to follow up with my client to see uh, from last week to see if the electrician came and seen her yesterday to quote a an entrance cable set up for a single wide trailer. So I have to see that pictured. And um, so we've got, we've got several things like that I'm working on. So it's a beautiful day in Georgia. Looking at the orchard right here. Beautiful blue sky, beautiful green grass for Georgia at this time. It's just gorgeous. Who wouldn't have a good day on a day like today? I guess we'll see. Yeah. One thing I don't know is, does this board, does it go from this board into that and then from the low voltage into that? Yeah, that's what, it, you need to read that man, that diagram for sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what it does, is that you have to it both inputs. wire all, yeah. I, it seems like it should only need that input, and that's what I can't never figure out. Well, I've read it has to have both, but I just don't know if it comes, I guess it comes straight from the board to there. Yeah, it goes straight from the board to there. I know that. Well, it has to have both input. I did read that. It does? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Which I guess it uses signals from that and what mm -hmm. mode it's in a select speed. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the best spot I'm about it. And then I'll get everything plugged back in. Hey, it's Tuesday and I'm in the closet with Zach. <laughs> oh, Zach is working on wiring up the motor. 
for the office. Our AC went out and he's getting it installed. We're putting a Evergreen motor in. So Evergreen motors, one of these right here. And then when you're dealing with a, when you're replacing a variable speed motor, you can take and put an extra controller on it. So if you have a Gentech motor like this right here, where you have 16 pins, this is called a 16 pin motor. So this is your low voltage input and this is your high voltage. So he's taking an ex a board, see pictured, and it's well really not a board, it's like a controller. And he's bolting that or, or putting that in line to power the new Evergreen, uh, which is a Gentech motor as well. But it's taking 16 pin, converting it to five pin. So something that we run into every now and then, the AC motor went out hmm, a couple days, ago, well, about a week ago, and so we had to get the correct motor and the correct module for it and everything. So he's working on that this morning. Uh, in other news, we finished up the project yesterday, as he pictured, and George, uh, yeah, I'm not supposed to say the name of the person. Uh, it was a heat pump change out uh, split system in a um, modular home. So that came together really nicely. Jonathan finished that up uh, yesterday evening late. I wasn't feeling so well yesterday, so I didn't do much uh, filming at the end of the day. We've got this coil right here that's going out with a filter dryer. When we re uh, replace a coil, we always put a filter dryer in place. So we've got that going out this morning for a project that Dustin is on, replacing a coil. And Cliff is bringing in a condenser for a job that Jonathan is doing in Louisville, a condenser changeout. So hopefully we'll get some pictures on all of that, get some video. And looking forward to a beautiful new day again. It's springtime here in Georgia. Got to better enjoy it while you can because the summer's coming and it's going to get hot. And I'm looking at all my inventory and I'm thinking I need to have a fire sale. For some reason I have a whole bunch of 14 sear, two and a half ton units. I've got one, oh that's a 15 sear. I've got one, oh no I've got a three ton right there. I wonder where that one came from. Interesting. No, that's a two and a half ton. So I've got one, two, three, four. I've got four two and a half ton units in stock. Three of them are 14 sear, one of them is a 15 sear. And I need, and they're all heat pump, I need to move them suckers. So I gotta find somewhere for them to go. So let's get busy. All right, so we're here this morning again in the shop and we're working on Reclaimer. We're reclaiming the refrigerant from this tank right here, from this tank right here into this tank. And uh, I'm looking here at some improvements that I want to make. Right now my two big reclaim tanks that we put refrigerant into are right here. I actually want to move them to right here and then put me a workbench right here, move all this out of the way. This pretty much can stay here. It's fine, but I want to move this so that I can put a bench right here. And that way we can walk up here. We can keep our reclaimers in here. We can keep our reclaim tanks. And we'll be able to do our reclaiming a lot easier. Uh, just walk up here. The only thing we've got to add is there is no receptacle on this wall. There is a receptacle right there. So we might need to somehow move and put a receptacle right there. But we'll see here. Anyways, we got little improvements that need to be made. And watching the sleek reclaim process. When you're reclaiming, you start from this side here. Uh, this is, we're reclaiming out of this tank. So reclaim out of this tank, in, and then out of the machine into the actual tank. So if this, in, in the sense that you're in the field, this would be like a unit right here. This is your actual air conditioning unit. You're reclaiming out and reclaiming in. And then this refrigerant actually gets sent back to um, a gas. Once we get them full, it gets sent back to uh, their place to actually be recycled. <clears throat> Got a little sharp point on it. You press it right into the core on the actual air conditioner and let refrigerant pass through across this little yellow paper. And if there's acid in there, you read on the back, 
if the indicator paper does not change color, an inorganic acid problem does not exist. But if it does change color, then we know there's a problem. So if it, no, if it changes from yellow, then we have a problem. That's right. Okay. And it's not really a problem for you. It's more of a, hey, what do we do with this refrigerant? You're not reusing it anyways because the new unit that we're putting in, that's being put on the truck right now, yeah, has refrigerant in it, right? But if this has acid in it, we know that that tank right there, that's acid and that we need to decide if we want to put it in that tank. We can put it in that tank, but they'll dock us on our refrigerant when we send it back. Or do we want to send that tank off somewhere else? But I just want to know if it has acid or not. So what would work the best is if you keep this little keep this thing inside this little cardboard, like open it, but keep it inside that little sleeve and tape it back shut, and then zip tie this to that tank when you bring it back. Yeah. So that we know if this has acid or not. And if you have a question about whether it changes color or not, you just take a picture of it and send it to me. All right, so, yeah, so right here, this is your, these are your mask controls right here, so. That moves your mask back and forth. That tilts your mask right there, right? This does your boom up and down, right? And then this is your parking brake right here. So that's parked? That's parked. Okay. That's what, really the way you want it when you're not running it at all. That's off the parking brake. And then if you come around this side, this is your forward and reverse. And if you, if you put it in reverse and it doesn't, it won't go, just flip it back to neutral and do it again. Because it's a little older forklift, so it's going to kind of be baby just a little bit. All right. And so this one's the gas that, pedal. That's actually your gas pedal. The that's the brakes. Yeah. Uh, one thing, when you, the minute you hit your brake, uh -huh. it disengages the gas. So right now you're not actually braking at all, so you free roll. Mm -hmm. But if then when you push down, then the brake pads engage. Okay. So you can do this thing called brake override, where you can have the pedal down, and you can have the brake on at the same time and drive like grandma. Gotcha. And it, but when you, it's really nice when you're trying to feather into something that's really tight, or if you've got a really heavy load over there, yeah. and it's real tipsy, and you want to go real easy down the, across the bump or whatever, it's really nice for that, because you're not just rolling. Gotcha. So that's the basics right there. Hey, hey, hopefully you don't crash it. I'm really a, a struggle. Zach, where's that capacitor at? With the, uh, the people that come in and they want to there. There. Booyah. All right, it's Wednesday morning. I'm in the warehouse here. Zach just brought that part in. He had went out on a service call yesterday evening, and uh, the capacitor was completely blown on the outdoor fan motor. So, yeah, so he's getting busy this morning. Let's see, how clean is Zach keeping his truck? Not too bad. It's just uh, a little out of place. He's a little out of place. He, he needs to do a little improving. I would say that you have a good hour's worth of work at some point very soon. Anyways, Bill the Snowman's here this morning. <laughs> and we're going through in, uh, thermostat inventory. We've got some train thermostats we're going through. Hey, I've got a, still got another Wi Fi water leak detector. Cliff is filling all chirper this morning. Yes, sir. I think so. Go. He's busy doing inventory. I think I might be stressing him out a little bit this morning, maybe. No. <laughs> Putting a little pressure on him. Let's go. <laughs> Anyways, it's a beautiful day. We're going to have a great day.
this is your refrigerant side. See how that went up and that's going down. That's your suction. That's your temperature of each pipe. And that's your subcool. We want that around 10. Plus or minus 3. We'll see if it climbs up. And it's already about 70 degrees in there, so it's not working real hard. Pressure should be at 318 to get subcool of 10. It's going up, we're already at 3. So it's, it's climbing. Sometimes it takes 15 minutes. But they're full inside and I don't want to make them uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. the uh, well I'm not real well yeah people are having exams in there there's a lot of people in there too I don't want to get the temperature too low so yeah that we'll take a screenshot of that and put it on company cam company cam there Get that one too. So I was laying on that orifice. Yeah. That'll that'll short out. So we just got done organizing all of our thermal expansion valves right here. So these are universal valves. 
that we keep in stock so that when somebody has a bad thermal expansion valve we can immediately replace it so we don't have to order one but this is uh if you look right there it's r22 four and a half to six ton and what we're doing is we're we're got we're waiting on lab, uh, professional labels to come in but so we can make these look a lot nicer but we're putting the vendor the part number the quantity and then the description so here we're keeping an R22 four and a half to six ton and a 410A one R22 two and a half to four ton R22 and 410A one and a half to two ton R22 and 410A and we need to keep two of each some of them we have three of which is fine but uh, ideally always have two and then our filter dryers are right here so when you're doing a TXV swap you can just pull this and you can grab your filter dryer at the same time and if you notice I've got the boxes pulled out from the shelf so that we remember to relabel these once the new labels come in down here is our new thermostats boxes labeled we need to pull these out so they can be labeled properly when they come in I can't pull this one out but we'll know to do it same thing here, same thing here. So here we have all of our thermostats. Now the cool thing is, is we have the new, right here we've only been able to use this Pro 3000, but we've got the new Pro 5000 fixing to come back out, see pictured. And uh, that's a Pro, this is the T4 Pro that we've been using, which is a nice thermostat, but it's still a little bit confusing, especially especially for older people. So we're gonna go back to the Pro 5000. It's non-programmable, it's a big display, easy to read, and Bill was just here this morning, so I've got him working on that. Hopefully, he'll be getting that done for me. And we're getting ready to place an order for refrigerant. We've gotta get uh, stocks with 410A refrigerant and our 422D for the, uh, for the summer. So hopefully that'll be done uh, today or tomorrow for sure. All right, so Cliff's running the forklift over here like it's going out of style. We got Jonathan. Hey, what's happening? Man, you gotta put me on the spotlight. <laughs> hey, we're working on this trailer here. Testing. Got a trailer that's. You can see it's right there. So originally, we were going to try to pull the whole skin off the outside right here, but this what we're trying to do now is see if we can't just pull the inside off and uh, pull the plywood on the inside off and then that'll make it so we can probably gonna have to pull the floor up back a little ways I screw missed the thing completely yep anyways if you think you need to pull the floor up first that's fine I'm fine with that but if that makes it easier for you to get it all. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm pulling it up. Well, I think we're going to end up probably pulling it up anyways. Like you want me to pull the whole thing? Well, I I would cut it. I'd cut it from right here because if you pull the whole floor, uh, you could have the trailer could go tweak on you. So if you just cut it, then you're. We can always put more plywood back down, like whole you pieces. From here. Yeah, I'd start up there in the front and just draw you a straight line. And then just cut it. You got a, uh, a popper? Uh, I don't know if I have a. I have one at my house, but I mean, you can get a straight edge. We got one. Yeah, that two by four is good enough. Anyways. Connect to device. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh, you got to probably go in there and hit the button on the side of the motor. I think, don't you? On the home screen, select Evergreen. There are instruction pages. This is a new motor that we just put in the office here. We're going through the, yeah, see, on delay options, off delay options. Uh, unlock the fixed delta between W1 and Y. Yeah, see, there's all kinds of things you can do. 
You might know where you, it should act as a real speed. Yeah. To be okay, so right here we're taking and setting the heating type, electric strip, heat staging is one stage on the heat strip. Now we change it to heat pump, and we've got a two stage cool, and T stat is two stage cooling. <coughs> See, this walks you through the connection diagram, doesn't it? Yeah, and I got everything hooked up as it should be. Mm hmm. Hello? Uh, yeah, answer and I'll hang up. So, Y1, Y2. So, there we go. On off delay. Airflow 40%. That's continuous fan. So, a lot of people set continuous fan to uh, 50%. Train's always 50%. There you go. Done. Apply changes. You have it on continuous fan? You have it on continuous fan right now? No, it's on auto. Okay, so it's just running. And then advanced setting, output type. Output one. What's output? What happens when you? Output type determines the information the user interface sends back to the OEM board. Only adjust this if the OEM board is displaying fault codes. No. To the mo no, it's not. Okay. Delta lock, I don't think we need that either. No, page. I wouldn't worry about delta lock. PM do the 16 pin and translate communication. Okay, and translate that communication directly to the motor. That's what. So you yeah, want. you do want that. Yep. It so it's checked. It. Okay, apply yeah. changes. Okay, now back. That's it. I think. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. You just press back a bunch, maybe. So let's next. Next, there you go. We can check the horsepower. Yeah, horsepower should be. Was it three quarter horsepower? It is. It's reading it right now. Oh, if the motor is running, it will stop during this process and turn back on when complete. Man, that's amazing. I wonder if they would make it like where if you replace the indoor blow motor. That's oh, half. You're supposed to be three quarter, aren't you? Aren't you? Or yeah, not? Supposed to be three quarter. Done. Okay, apply changes. Is your clock and your clockwise is just counterclockwise? Interesting. Mm. Man, I wonder if they could do like a deal where if they didn't pay their bill, we could just go in and like turn it off. You know, maybe. Go back I wish I could have done it to that guy that owes me $1,600 from uh, Waynesboro and put a new motor in for him in the summer as a variable speed. It's like $1,600 and never pays his bill. Go in the app and turn that sucker off. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we got this all taken out. Let's see right where this thing is all loose up in there. So we're gonna get it. You see, this metal's just completely broke out of here. It's all messed up right there. So now we're gonna get the guy to jack it up and weld it in place. He's gonna cut that out. Yeah, right there. Once we cut that out, then we'll be in business. Yeah, you, you can see, I don't know if you can see this or not, but that is that frame right there is almost above the frame right here. But down here, it's sunk all the way down below. So, good night. So I'm thinking maybe they could take and put a two by four across right here and then jack up on it and get it. You know, it's summertime when you start seeing big old bumblebees. It's just all there's to it. And jack up on it and get it up above that frame. What time is it? Yeah, I gotta keep moving. I gotta get these quotes done. All right, good, good stuff. Saved us a bunch of potentially money right there. Taking that all loose. Hey, your jack stand's about to... Hey, Ben. Yeah. It's moving a little bit right here. Okay. Okay. Hey, good morning. So, I'm in the uh, farm farmyard here this morning. But uh, I've got...
Mr. Welder Ben over here working on getting this. Hey, good morning. <laughs> Welder Ben with Gordy Drive is over here fixing my trailer uh, this morning. You can see right here where that thing was rubbing so bad up in there from that. Originally, we were going to pull the whole skin off, but I had an idea the other day, and I was like, hey, you know what? I think we can pull the plywood on the inside and take this and just weld it from inside instead of trying to pull the whole skin from outside and weld it from outside. Anyways, so Ben's over here this morning. He's welded up. Ben actually used to work with us uh, years ago, and so it's really cool to see him. He's got him a truck with a trailer and a welder, and he is going to town. You don't mind me watching you, do I? Do yeah, you? you're fine. Okay. <laughs> tires. And then they got rubbed right here as the tire was spinning. It would spin past there. These are the screws I tried to put in to make it fix it, but that didn't work. Oh, Ben, he's always so organized. See, he just laid it all out there, you know? Just.
Yeah. What come loose and your frame is being. Oh yeah. Everywhere there's a piece, yeah. be careful you don't want it to cut each other. Everywhere that piece is, ripped out. So I'll be fixing the hole, the tear track, and the frame is bent right here. I'll be straightening that out, putting it tight there, bringing this back up to where it goes, fixing it back in place, and going back, straightening these out, test the hand, putting it back together. There'll still be like some kinks and stuff in the metal, but it'll be behind the tires. You That's see. fine. Go with it. Okay, so I am working this morning here on some sales projects. I'm looking at my calendar. So what I do to manage my sales projects is I have, I use Trello <clears throat> to manage all my projects. And then I've got all the, um, I've got them all in a calendar. So when I want to call someone, I can just like, I didn't get all my follow-ups done yesterday. So I can just click on that, find their phone number, and then, um, take and give them a call. Hey, good morning, Mr. Ted. I am better than I deserve. How about yourself, sir? <laughs> oh, he's doing fine. He, he, no, he's always running around here and there doing different little projects and he don't hardly answer the phone when I call him either so we're together in that club but uh anyways but he's fine he's actually I can hear him talking over in his office right now we're in the office together at the moment but yeah he's around but what you got going on okay Coming together for you? That one's in place. It has straight down, reinforcements all around. Yeah. Um, track here. Awesome. Down there was crumpled like that one. Man, oh man, it's coming together. Good job, Bob. All right. You got a save for everything. Bob. I do. Let's go, Joe, and after a while, I'll talk about Good job, Bob. <laughs> what else you got? Uh, I've got some more. I can't remember them all. All right, I gotta run to Waynesboro, so. I'll be here. Okay, call me if you need something. Dad's still at the office over there. All right. So, all right. All right. All right, so Ben just walked me through exactly what he's got to do to fix that trailer. I think he's got a great plan. He is in his prime. Loving what he does. It's awesome. So we're gonna see how that comes together. I'm glad he's able to get it fixed. That trailer is just not built good. That's just all there is to it. It's so interesting. That trailer there, I've only had for, I don't know, five or six years. It wasn't brand new when I got it, but it was in pretty good condition. This trailer here, I have had for 10 years, and it's been through a lot worse uh, treatment, I guess you could say. No, I've had this probably 15 years. And it's been through a lot worse treatment than that one out there has. And it's still in excellent shape. I mean, it's, it cosmetically it needs some stuff done. We put new fenders on it and stuff like that. But it's just, it is a very built, very well built trailer. It's a cargo mate. I don't even think they build them anymore <clears throat> right now. But anyways... Trailers are just something that need a lot of work at times. I'm sure they're not built well. All right, that's it for this week's video. Thanks so much for watching. Click here to watch last week's video. Click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel.